Hey everyone, Dimitri here, and today we are going to destroy some old helmets. So if you watched any of my other videos, you know that I like to kind of nerd out on stuff. So if you just want to see some helmets destroyed, look at the chapters below and just skip ahead in the video because I'm going to talk about these helmets a little bit and just kind of nerd out on it. Uh, and if you don't want to hear me talk, just skip ahead. All right, so we got three helmets here. These are all old helmets, and we're actually going to get rid of this guy. Uh, I'm going to do a destruction slash cut apart of this climb F5 helmet later. So we're just going to toss this, and we're going to focus on these two. Um, these are both over 10 years old, um, and the interesting thing about them is that they're actually um, kind of related to each other. This is essentially a predecessor of this helmet. Uh, this is an AFX, this is a fly racing one, but the fly, um, or fly trekker, but the fly trekker was actually made by, um, I don't know if it's made by the same company or how, it, how that whole thing works, but the fly trekker is the same helmet as the AFX FX 41 or, or something like that. And I think this is the FX 39 might actually say somewhere on it. Oh, 37. There you go. So this was one, actually one of, I think, the first kind of mass market, uh, mid-range, maybe even cheaper range uh, adventure helmets. Um, it, you know, back when the uh, Arai Hornet and, and such first came out, um, they were obviously Arai being, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars, and um, these were more in the hundred or so dollar range. So. Um, and then it was pretty quickly replaced by the Fly Trekker slash um, AFX FX41 or 39 or something like that. Um, and I, th I think the f they updated this helmet a few times. Um, I don't know if they still make it or not. Uh, so this is not really relevant to any sort of uh, um, modern helmet. But it will be kind of interesting to compare um, and contrast just the evolution of the helmets even in a, a short number of uh, years. Safety first. So this is what these two look like after five drops from about six feet onto concrete with a 12 pound sandbag inside each helmet. You can see the shells actually look pretty good, especially for not being anything fancy. I'm pretty sure they're just polycarb, no, not carbon fiber or anything composite. So you could say, hey, these look fine. You'd be tempted to reuse this helmet, but this is why it's really important to take a look inside the helmet after you smack your head because you can see that the EPS is all sorts of cracked. So in a real world situation, this helmet would be trash. We are done with round two. I dropped these helmets onto a brick with a 12 pound weight inside of them. This is not a good scenario. Hopefully you're not falling down on bricks, but figured uh, some more pointed impact would be interesting to see. And still the shells actually are holding up really well. You can definitely see where uh, there has been some point impacts on both of these helmets, but uh, there's no cracks. They just kind of bounce off of the brick and these are surprisingly durable. Insides definitely look extra bad. It's kind of interesting, actually. The uh, this so this is also a multi-layer EPS system. You can actually really feel it here. This 
layer right here. I can squish with my finger. This is the soft layer, and this one I can't really even squish. So this is how they do dual layer EPS in these, in these helmets. And the newer helmet is actually the opposite. The, this outside layer is the soft layer. So this is the soft layer right here. Uh, that's against the shell. And this insert was the hard layer. So that's something that you should keep in mind that is maybe not obvious, even if you do inspect your EPS after you have a crash. The soft layer is going to confer or can um, compress first because it's softer and more pliable. And you might not be able to see it because the hard layer is not compressing, the soft layer is compressing, and that soft layer is between the shell and the hard layer. So it's compressing inside the helmet and you can't see it. We're moving to the big guns now. literally took a sledgehammer to actually crack these shells. It is amazing how tough they are, even on these cheaper helmets. And what's also interesting is that despite the fact that this older AFX helmet felt so flimsy, it took about the same amount of effort to break both of these shells. And inside they actually look pretty similar. They're probably made in the same factory or they were uh, made in the same factory out of the same materials but even so even even after smacking it a few times with a sledgehammer i smashed it a few to more times after it cracked and it didn't exactly shatter so there's some good flexibility in this material that um, even if you are somehow very very unlucky to run your head into a sledgehammer or some other pointy object like that. Um, the helmet doesn't really shatter, it, it stays in one piece. So it's actually pretty cool. Uh, again, this is not very scientific. This, this one maybe shattered a little bit more. It's not very scientific, but it's still pretty interesting. I have a whole new level of respect for how tough these actually are. And uh, even not being a very expensive helmet, so it's kind of interesting uh, what's inside of here. Not anything too unexpected. There is a bunch of smushed EPS at the very top where I kept dropping the helmet onto. Um, I kind of wish I would have dropped it on the back as well to see if that would get smushed and to see if it, get, if it gets uh, smashed on the back side or not. Um, it's obviously here it's kind of hard to tell at the very top because it got smashed by the sledgehammer. So on this one you can actually see how flat the top of this is. And you can see little dents here from where the impact happened and the shell conformed and dented the EPS in. So this was kind of an interesting experiment. I uh, definitely learned some things. Again, none of this is scientific and most of this smashing that I've done, you would have probably been dead long before the shell broke. Uh, so I think that's one of the main things that I've actually kind of came away with from this is that despite 
people on the internet saying that polycarbonate helmets are unsafe and that they crack and shatter. I think it takes a lot of force to actually shatter it. Um, and if, like I was saying, if you manage to shatter it, uh, you are probably already dead or have some very serious problems uh, going on inside the helmet um, because it literally took four to five hits with a big sledgehammer to actually crack the shell. And even when it cracked, it didn't shatter. It just formed a crack in there. And at that point, uh, whatever object managed to crack it is going to be hitting you in the head and the shell, it doesn't really matter at that point. So carbon fiber, great. I wear a carbon fiber or a composite helmet typically. Uh, it's great for weight, um, it's awesome. But if you've got a polycarb helmet and it's DOT tested and approved and ECE tested and approved, uh, you're probably in pretty good shape. Um, so I was actually pretty impressed with how good both of these helmets were, uh, despite this one feeling kind of flimsy. There wasn't really a, a huge difference between these two um, as far as my very unscientific smashing them with things. I was expecting this one to pretty much immediately break and they were pretty even. And the face shields are actually also really, really beefy. I've got the one from the other helmet over there in my discard pile and I've tried to break them by hitting them with a sledgehammer, throwing the bricks at them and I was not really successful at cracking them. Uh, so they can definitely take some damage. So that is two thoroughly destroyed helmets. Hopefully you guys find this entertaining and interesting. I definitely found it very interesting to see just how much abuse a modern helmet can take, even if it's uh, nothing fancy, just a kind of low to mid end uh, helmet from 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, so I definitely found that very, very interesting. And I'm going to be very, very curious how a top of the line uh, climb F5 does. So that video should be coming out here in a couple of weeks. So if you're curious to check that out, um, definitely subscribe or just keep an eye on the channel. Um, I am very curious to see how that does.